Starting off our list at number 10 is Mark Ruffalo. Now, true Avengers fans will know this story already, but for those who don't, don't worry, and please don't attack me in the comment section, because this has been an ongoing joke between Mark Ruffalo, who plays the Hulk, and the Russo brothers. Essentially, the joke goes that Mark Ruffalo was on the Jimmy Fallon show, and he faked that he had leaked the fourth Avengers movie title. So he tweeted Jimmy to please remove it from the show, and then Jimmy said the episode was already soon to air. This drew fans to watch the show, only to see that the so-called spoiler had been bleeped out, so it was clearly a publicity stunt. The Russo brothers then tweeted at Mark saying, you're fired. The pair tweeted back and forth until the endgame poster was revealed, which Mark jokingly tweeted, so I'm not fired? But some people took this joke too seriously and are still worried he won't be in Avengers 4. But don't worry, Mark's firing is just a joke and he will for sure be in Avengers 4. Next on our list is Catherine Langford. This isn't so much as a firing as it's simply a complete cut from the movie. It was announced early on that Catherine would appear here in the record-breaking film Avengers Endgame. However, when fans watched the movie, they couldn't find her anywhere. Directors Joe and Anthony Russo confirmed that Catherine filmed a scene for Endgame in which she played an older version of Tony Stark's daughter, Morgan, saying, quote, there was an idea that we had that Tony was gonna go into the metaphysical way station that Thanos goes into when he snapped his fingers, and that there was going to be a future version of his daughter. We showed it to a test audience, and it was really confusing. Grown up, Morgan was supposed to tell her father she forgave him and let him die in peace. But because the adult version of Morgan didn't resonate with the audience, the scene never made it to the final cut, and Catherine was let go from the Marvel Universe. We have Gerard Sanders at number 8. Howard Stark, Tony Stark's father, has appearances and has been referenced several times in the MCU. Many people think John Slatery is the only man to play Stark, as he appeared in Iron Man 2 and onwards, even being killed off in Civil War by the Winter Soldier. But many fans forget it's actually Sanders who played Stark first. I mean, he never acted the role, but he modeled as Howard in photographs in the first Iron Man film. However, when it came to acting the character and breathing the role to life, Marvel felt Gerard didn't have what they were looking for and he was fired and replaced with John. In at number 7, Stellan Skarsgård. Stellan is perhaps one of the most famous Norwegian actors in the world today and is very well trained thespian in the Dog 195 style. According to his co-workers though, he is notorious for pranking people and apparently he has leveraged his intimidating accent and dramatic flair to outright scare his co-stars beyond belief. He actually managed to coerce actor Paul Bettany to work with him in the film Dogville, a film for which Bettany refers to as a disgusting experience and compared Stellan's acting process to torture. When it came time to film The Avengers, Stellan was very outspoken about how he felt lost amongst the superheroes. He told interviewers that he didn't know how they were going to cram all of them into one movie and still have a story that actually moves forward. Ooh, I bet the executives didn't like that press. In at number six, Finn Jones. Finn Jones was the star of Marvel's Iron Fist, and while he was fairly easy to work with in regards to the day-to-day -day acting, it became more of a scripting issue than anything else. According to his co-workers on the show, though, he just didn't have any real chemistry with any of them, which included his real-life friend Jessica Henwick, who played the show's love interest, Colleen Wing. This lack of chemistry most definitely shows up on screen, and this actually is the reason the show received so much backlash from fans. They were certainly upset with the casting decision for Finn as the title character, Danny Rand. This lack of simple human on-screen connection with his fellow actors made it very difficult to produce new stories surrounding him. In at number 5, Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis is without a doubt the king of motion capture performances, beginning with his roles as Gollum, King Kong, and Caesar in The Rise of the Planet of the Apes. This style of acting can be extremely difficult because well, behind the scenes it feels incredibly silly, but because he has learned to trust his acting skills, he has leveraged himself into some very big movies. More recently, his villainous role in The Avengers Age of Ultron and Black Panther. Although this has always been a bit of a chip on his shoulder, and as such he has carried this with him to each project every time. Most notably was the squabbles that he had with Marvel's graphic and CGI designers. Apparently he had been very rude and dismissive to them even though he was simply the actor that was cast in the role based on his stellar previous performances. Since being labeled a king of that genre, his ego has just gotten far too out of hand and therefore Andy believes that he always knows best. In number 4, Corey Stoll. While some of these Marvel actors have been hard to work with because of executives getting in the way and others with their diva-like behavior, Corey Stoll falls into the pretentious category. Category. Corey Stoll plays the villain Darren Cross in Ant-Man and while promoting the film he had been known to hijack the interviews to spout the limitations of his art form and the emptiness of politics. Most of the films that he's done in the past never really had a chance to hit the public first without Corey adding in some liberal bias and defaming reflections to the characters that he's played. 
Apparently he has a very bad habit of expressing just how disappointed he was with production and as I said most of the time this took place before the film ever was even released. Which for sure puts executives on edge when thinking about casting him in their films. Number 3. Josh Dallas as Fandril. Although he was killed off in the opening scene of Thor Ragnarok, Fandril was important to the Asgard world as one of the Warriors 3. Zack Levi was originally casted to play the role but had to decline due to his TV show Chuck being extended for a third season. So Josh Dallas was then cast and stepped into the role. But then when it came to Thor The Dark World, Josh's show Once Upon a Time then became very popular and got extended, so he had to pull out of Thor. Funny enough, when he did pull out, Zachary was then available and so he got to play the role he was originally cast for in both Thor The Dark World and Thor Ragnarok. Coming close to the end with Terrence Howard at number 2. A notable recast with the role of James in Iron Man, the film that started it all. Terrence Howard played the role in the first movie and was signed on for more films. However, Howard was the highest paid actor on Iron Man and for reasons unknown, Marvel didn't want to give him a pay bump for Iron Man 2 as they promised. Instead, they ended up firing Howard altogether, giving some of his pay to Robert Downey Jr., the star of the show, who ironically had asked for a pay raise and thus this whole issue kind of began. Howard was eventually fired and replaced by Don Cheadle and although Don played the role wonderfully and made it his own, it's a little bothersome that the two actors don't really resemble one another and they both played the roles so differently. But then again, that's Hollywood. Last but not least, in at number one is Howard Norton. The Hulk has had a lot of firings in this list, but this is his most notable. In the 2008 film The Incredible Hulk, which kind of tanked at the box office, Edward played the beloved Bruce Banner, aka The Hulk, which even has a surprise cameo from Robert Downey Jr., who plays Iron Man. Norton was set to play the Hulk in the Avengers film, however, the actor is apparently a lot to deal with on set, demanding to have a lot of creative control over his character, which uh, didn't sit well with Marvel. And considering The Incredible Hulk didn't do that well, Marvel chose to replace Edward Norton for a more well-known actor, in this case being Mark Ruffalo, even though they both look nothing alike. Although fans have noted that they did enjoy Edward's take on Bruce Banner, due to his creative differences with the production crew, he had to be fired. In number 9, Brie Larson. When Brie Larson was confirmed to play Captain Marvel, the comic book trolls bombarded the Rotten Tomatoes page with negative reviews before the film was even released. Part of the reason fans were upset with this new Marvel character was mostly due to how much they pushed the fact that she was a woman, as if there was never any female superheroes before her. Fans correctly noted how Wonder Woman was able to allow the character to just speak for herself when it came to sending a message of female empowerment. Although with Captain Marvel, there was almost too much of a focus on her gender being the reason that she was a hero. Perhaps the main reason she had become difficult to work with was that Larson's own politics began creeping in during press junkets. In what was a PR nightmare, Brie made several comments about how how there were too many white men in Hollywood, which even included the critics that review the movies. She's not wrong, but it's also a very hostile way to start your MCU journey, especially considering that most of her castmates are, well, white men. In at number 8, Natalie Portman. In another stunning example of identity politics spoiling casting choices, Natalie Portman originally left the MCU because of a female director being fired. Portman was locked in to do the Thor sequel, but after top executives decided to drop Patty Jenkins as the director, Natalie was furious. She also made a point of letting every news let know just how deeply upset she was by the decision. Natalie wanted to quit immediately following Jenkins' departure at a protest, but she was contractually obligated to finish the film. Although one of the most surprising things to happen at the 2019 San Diego Comic Con was the announcement that Portman would be returning to the MCU for an appearance in Endgame, as well as the next installment of the Thor solo series. So she can't be that hard to work with. Number 7. Lou Ferrigno. Another Hulk related firing. You see, Lou provided the voice of the Hulk once Bruce Banner transformed. He's been voicing the Hulk since the 1970s TV show and made it into the MCU from the first Avenger all the way to Age of Ultron. But when it came to Thor Ragnarok, Mark Ruffalo, who is the actor for Bruce Banner, took over for the voice portion of the post transformation of Hulk as well. He is Groot and he is at number 6. Although Vin Diesel is known for providing the voice of the beloved living tree, the visuals of Groot has been played by different people. In the first Guardians of the Galaxy, Kristen Godlewski was the body double that the cast would play off of to help help envision Groot, to which the CGI team then worked their movie magic in post-production. When it came to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Groot is a wee tree sapling and thus didn't need an actor to play off him as he was completely made through CGI. But in Infinity War, Groot is a teenager and thus Marvel casted Perry Nattery to be the motion capture actor. In this 
this scenario, it isn't so much Marvel firing an actor as it is the actor simply growing into a height from an adult to a teenager, and thus a recast was necessary. At the halfway point with Hugo Weaving. Hugo originally played Red Skull, who some fans argue is one of the best Marvel villains. Weaving played Red Skull in Captain America The First Avenger. However, the actor has publicly stated how he hated the intense makeup it took to get him into the role of Red Skull and how he wouldn't play the role of the Hydra leader again. Well, Red Skull did make a surprise cameo in Infinity War, but he was played by Ross McQuitty from The Walking Dead. Ross is very well known for his impersonations of Hollywood actors and so Marvel hunted him down to recreate the role of Red Skull. He does such a good job that many fans almost didn't notice the recast, myself included. In number three, Vin Diesel. There's almost no end to the stories about Vin Diesel being hard to work with. The star has been accused of hitting on interviewers and stirring feuds with co-stars. Most notably was his recent feud with Dwayne Johnson. When Vin Diesel started to voice the character of Gru, everyone absolutely loved the character. Luckily for Vin Diesel, he never really had to directly interact or work with other actors in the film. While Gru may seem to be one of the most unifying characters for the Guardians of the Galaxy crew, the reality is the actor voicing him is the exact opposite. According to reports while filming Fast and Furious 7, he was an absolute nightmare while on set. This insider told The Hollywood Reporter, Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day. The next day, they waited four hours for him. He called a meeting of studio execs to his trailer for two and a half hours to say, what the F am I doing here? And then the next day, work was done with doubles, and another source confirms that progress had been frustrating with the whole crew suffering from low morale. All thanks to Vin Diesel. In number two, Guy Pearce. Before starring as the slimeball villain Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3, Pierce had a list of demands before he agreed to even take on the role. While his agency was excited at the opportunity to have their client involved with this project, Guy was a little more hesitant. He was very open about how he preferred to work with interesting directors and weighty material, but took the meeting because he enjoyed the first Iron Man film. Shane Black, who directed the film, was a big fan of Guy Pierce and was basically bending over backwards just to get him in the room for a meeting with Marvel Studios. Shane ran him through the general idea of how he he would be involved in the film, but Pierce did end up telling his agent that he was not going to do the movie until they showed him the script. As we're sure you know by now, Marvel is very secretive about handing out material for projects because, well, they don't want any details leaked. Although when Pierce refused to take the role without a script, they emailed him a link that would expire after two hours. Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Anthony Hopkins. After Thor The Dark World, Anthony Hopkins admitted that he had no interest in coming back as Odin for the following film, Thor Ragnarok. Apparently, he had been so disinterested in the entire Thor franchise that he felt doing two movies was more than enough for him. It wasn't until Taika Waititi was announced to be directing the next movie that he agreed to stay on board. I guess when you've been acting as long as Anthony Hopkins has, you can kind of start throwing your weight around with demands. He was a big factor in the decision to make this film more comedic than its predecessor. He insisted again and again that he would not be part of the the MCU if they decided to take the film in the same dark and gritty route that the previous one did. Sure enough, the film turned out to be a standalone classic of the franchise, but his posh attitude was duly noted by executives at the time. In number 10, Robert Downey Jr. This point may be a bit different than the rest of these Marvel actors. Although Robert had a long history of being wild and difficult to work with, his Marvel days were rather tame. In fact, he has been praised for just how easy he is to work with. Although if you're an executive at Disney, you may not view him in the same light as his fellow actors. Robert is a stark defender of equal pay in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When he saw his paycheck, he advocated that the other actors get paid more because he really didn't like the vast disparity between what they were getting paid. He even made a very public stink about just how underpaid his co-workers were and said that most were only making a fraction of his salary. While the bad publicity may have helped them even out the pay, it certainly put him on the Disney execs bad side. In at number 9, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones has been around Hollywood for a very long time and his acting chops and charismatic on-screen performances have made him a staple in the industry. Although he has been known to be a bit of an on-set bully as well. According to Jim Carrey, Tommy was verbally threatening people left, right, and center while filming Batman Forever. In terms of the Marvel Universe, Tommy Lee Jones played the role of Colonel Phillips in Captain America The First Avenger. In his defense though, Jones managed to keep his anger under wraps while filming and overall didn't cause too much of a stir while on set. However, if you listen to anyone that's worked with him prior to the MCU, they really found him to be difficult to work with. In number 8, Hugo Weaving. 
Hugo Weaving played a pivotal role in the MCU when he joined as the evil character called Red Skull. Although when it came time to reprise his role in Avengers Endgame, he noted that negotiations with Marvel proved to be impossible. Most actors that first negotiate contracts with Marvel executives were told that they were obligated to do at least three films, but that the pay would slowly raise with each one. However, Hugo noted that when it came to starring in the Avengers, his pay grade was far less than what he had received for the first one, and that he wasn't even offered any more films following that. He continued by saying, they said it's just a voice job, it's not a big deal, I actually found negotiating with them through my agent impossible, and I didn't really want to do it that much, but I would have done it. Problem with that statement is that Hugo has been very open about just how much he hates doing voiceover roles. Especially when he voiced Megatron in the Transformers movie, he said it felt empty and meaningless. In at number 6, Gwyneth Paltrow. Even though Gwyneth Paltrow has been part of the MCU since its inception, she clearly only is paying attention to the paychecks. During an episode of the Netflix show Chef's Table, she completely forgot that she was in Spider-Man Homecoming. And even worse was that she had no idea Samuel L. Jackson was a member of the MCU, even though she had been in five films with him at the time. Although at 46, Paltrow wasn't interested in dressing up in a superhero suit anymore and was very vocal about this upon her departure from the franchise following Endgame. Gwyneth told Variety Magazine that she doesn't see herself committing to any more sequels and that she really only got involved because she was friends with director Jon Favreau. In at number 5, Idris Elba. Most actors that are part of the MCU see it as a blessing for their career, which is a lot considering that most of Hollywood shied away from superhero films because they didn't want to be pigeonholed. Even though Idris Elba had a key role in the franchise, he still believed in the latter and actually referred to working in Marvel movies as torture. Specifically, he was referring to his role in Thor 2 and the reshoots required after he had wrapped on the film Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Idris elaborated on this scene as specifically when he told media outlets, I'm actually falling down from a spaceship so they had to put me in a harness in this green screen studio and in between takes I was stuck there. Fake hair stuck on my head with glue, this effing helmet while they reset and I'm thinking 24 hours ago I was Mandela I was literally walking in this man's boots within six months we were all so in love with this film that we had made I was Mandela practically then there I was in this stupid harness with this wig and this sword and these contact lenses it ripped my heart out and that statement ripped mine out we love you Idris why would you be so difficult to work with. In at number 4, Mickey Rourke. Oscar winner Mickey Rourke famously hated starring in Iron Man 2, even saying after his starring villain role that Marvel heads diluted his character Ivan Venko to a one-dimensional bad guy, adding that creative control rested with some nerd with a pocket full of money calling the shots. Mickey Rourke is the kind of actor that always wants to add more layers to his character, and although they initially agreed to this, he was surprised when the decision makers pulled the rug out from underneath his intended performance. Mickey went on to say, I'm not a Marvel fan once I did a movie for Marvel and they cut the whole goddamn thing out. When you bring it to the table, it's really disappointing when they cut things out. According to reports, Rourke did not take this decision lightly and would continuously be a pain to work with on each day that he was scheduled to film. In number three, Stan Lee. Now, 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 don't get your panties in a bunch. I love Stan Lee as much as the next person and without him, we wouldn't even be talking about Marvel. That being said, Stan had a long history of being extremely difficult to work with and for. He has a very checkered past when it comes to his history as a writer and comic book publisher. Most notably was his very public feud with Jack Kirby, which put the legacies and rights of the characters into a tailspin. Thankfully, all of his cameos in each of the Marvel films were so minuscule that he never really had an opportunity to stir up any controversy while on set. However, if he had been on longer than just a few days, there's no telling what kind of drama Mr. Lee could have started. That being said, rest in peace, we love you forever, Stan Lee. In at number two, Tom Holland. Also known as the king of spoilers, we have the young addition to the Marvel Universe, aka the new Spider-Man, who should most definitely be renamed to Spoiler-Man. Perhaps the funniest and most upsetting moment for Tom's co-stars was when he did a live stream of him opening a package from Mark Ruffalo. As he pulled out the poster for the unannounced Avengers Endgame, it clearly said on the pack, confidential, do not share. Yet it wasn't until Tom flipped the page around that he realized the amount of trouble that he had just caused for everyone at Marvel Studios. Following this, almost all of his interviews were paired up with an adult just in case he began to spill the beans. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, James Spader. Another man that went under some motion capture drama was actor James Spader, who delivered an exceptional performance as Ultron. During an interview with Rolling Stone, James admitted that he has a very strong obsessive compulsive issue and because of this is very particular with filming. Multiple actors who have worked with him in the past such as William Shatner recall that James doesn't even like watching people eat. Maggie Gyllenhaal also admitted that because he always remains in character he can be extremely difficult to be around. 
Even the showrunner for the show The Blacklist alleged that he had to speak with Spader on the phone daily because he was always having an issue with scripts. On one occasion, he said, on Thanksgiving when I was in Colorado, I was out pacing on the phone for two hours. This stuff keeps him up at night. He can dig his heels in, the conversations can be frustrating. Can't even imagine.